Now, just when we thought that smartphones are getting boring and not innovative, Samsung decides to launch the Samsung Galaxy Fold. So in this video, I'm going to go through everything that you guys need to know about this device, especially when using this phone as my daily driver. So keep watching. Hey, what's up guys, Adam Lobo here and you're watching Adam Lobo TV. If you guys are new, hello and welcome. Do consider subscribing to my channel as I release videos at least twice a week. Last week it was four times a week. And if you're returning as a subscriber, welcome back to the fold. Now let's unbox the phone. Now the Samsung Galaxy Fold comes in a black box with the word Galaxy written in a very cool folding kind of way. Then at the back, there's some of the specs over there. Now the reason why the writings are in French because this is a French unit but obviously it is the same where the ones here in Malaysia will be in English. Now you will need to slide the cover which unveils another half black cover box. Then it will reveal a white box inside. You will then need to lift the tab of the box that will show the fold inside. Underneath you'll find a welcome message again in French for this particular box. Then there's a service paper card as well. Then you'll find another small black box which contains the user guide, the warranty card and the SIM ejector pin. And you'll also find the hard case which had a carbon fibre like finish. And then you'll find more thoughtful accessories like the Samsung Galaxy Buds since there's no headphones jack for the phone. Then there's a fast charging brick, a USB-A to USB-C dongle, and next to it, there's another small black box which houses the USB-A to USB-C cable and the Galaxy Buds extra ear tips. Now going over to the phone specs, the Galaxy Fold comes with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 chipset. It has the Adreno 640 GPU and it comes with just one variant which is a huge 12 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. And it comes shipped with Android 9 Pie with Samsung's one and only One UI. Now moving into the colour finishes, it comes with two colours for you guys to choose from where the one which I have is called the Space Silver and then there's also Cosmos Black. Now looking at the design and build of the phone, it has an all glass front and also at the back which makes the device really solid and premium with the Gorilla Glass 6 at the back and then the sides of the phone are made out of metal which adds to the solid feel to the phone and then the triple cameras are arranged in a vertical order at the back of the phone similar to the Note 10. Now once the phone is folded at the front, it is called the cover display which has a single camera on top. Now since its first release, Samsung has overhauled the design, so here's what's new. First, there's now no visible screen protector where on the original fold, there seems to be like a screen protector where some reviewers tried peeling it off and it was damaged. Itchy fingers. So Samsung has made the polymer layer of this Infinity Flex display extend to beneath the plastic bezel to ensure that it cannot be peeled off. Now there's also a screen caps at the end of the phone with a new T-shaped caps which has been placed to help plug in the air gaps that existed before you fold the phone screen. Then the space between the hinges at the back is also fully covered to ensure there's no dirt that can get in between it. Then lastly, the fold has a new and reinforced screen where with the new design, they have added a second layer of the metal underneath the Infinity Flex display to make the screen crease less prominent and to also reinforce the protection of the display as well. So yes, huge props goes out to Samsung for making all these improvements on the phone to make sure there's no compromise on the device, especially with a first generation device like this. Now looking at the ports and buttons on the bottom of the phone, you will find a USB Type-C port towards the right hand side of the fold and then one of the two stereo speakers on the left. Then on the right, there is the volume rocker, a power button 
and a separate fingerprint sensor just like the S10e which to me is great to be placed over there as it is really fast and accurate as well. Looking on the left, there is the SIM card slot with no micro SD card slot expansion and on top, there's the other stereo speaker. Now looking at the phone's cover display, we are greeted with a 4.6 inch Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 720 by 1680 pixels with a 21 by 9 aspect ratio which to be completely honest, at first I thought it was small but I kind of got used to it very quickly especially how easy it could be used in just one hand. Now opening up the phone, you'll have a huge Infinity Flex display which has a 7.3 inch 1536 by 2152 pixel resolution which is using Samsung's dynamic AMOLED display which is slightly higher in quality than the Note 10. And then there's also the dual front facing camera over there as well. Now the screen comes in an aspect ratio of 4 by 2 by 3 and viewing videos on portrait mode was already great since the size of the screen itself is pretty huge and you can adjust the resolution on YouTube up to 1440p which was nice and due to its unique aspect ratio, videos on YouTube will be filled following the cutout of the front camera where the screen just goes before the camera cutout for Netflix. And yes, due to its dynamic AMOLED display technology, viewing videos on the Fold was second to none. Alright, let's look at the camera specs at the back. You'll find the same high quality cameras that you will find in the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 where there is the 12 megapixel f1.5 to f2.4 variable aperture 27mm wide lens, a 12 megapixel f2.4 52mm telephoto lens and a 16 megapixel f2.2 aperture 12mm ultra wide angle lens. Now pictures on the phone were amazing since it uses the same camera as the Note 10 as mentioned where if you like the Note 10's photos, which I'm sure you will, you will surely love the images coming out of this phone. Now you can use the camera app with the phone folded or even when the phone is unfolded as well. Then as for the front camera, you have two options to either use the cover displays 10 megapixel f2.2 aperture or you can use the dual front camera right inside which has a 10 megapixel f2.2 aperture and another 8 megapixel f1.9 which is a depth sensor. Now image quality was also great for both the cover display and also the dual cameras inside and if you're looking to take portrait selfies, I would highly recommend for you to take the unfolded cameras inside due to its depth sensor but the live focus for the cover display was also great thanks to its amazing great image processing for the phone software. Now as for video, again it has the same specs as the Note 10 where it records up to UHD 2160 up to 60 frames per second with great image stabilization with or without the super steady mode turned on and I have to say that I found that taking videos is way much easier when I kept the phone folded like this as it had a smaller footprint. Then as for the front camera, it records up to UHD 2160 up to 30 frames per second with also an excellent image stabilization. Now as for the phone speaker, this phone is hands down the best phone speakers that I've ever heard on any phone. From playing videos, playing games to even listening to music, the audio quality was really loud and also clear at the same time. Trust me, I'm an audiophile so I can guarantee you, you will get an amazing audio and here's a quick sound test. Now as for the phone software, it has Samsung's brand new One UI on top of Android 9 Pie and as for someone who loves the One UI, this experience was no different to me and what I love about this software experience is the continuity between the apps when the phone is folded and also unfolded as well. So I always have the option to choose between the cover's display screen for a regular task and then switch it over to the full bigger screen inside if I want to. Now I also like typing on the phone screen where the keyboard layout was divided into the right and also on the left which made typing seamless and using the phone to read articles online for social media and browsing as well and then the multi-window mode was great for multitasking and since there is the fingerprint sensor at the side, you can use it as the notification slider just like the Samsung Galaxy S10e. So yes, the overall experience using the phone as my daily driver was again truly amazing.
Now, as for the phone's battery, the Samsung Galaxy Fold comes with a total of 4,380 mAh of battery, where it seems to be a bit small as the device has a huge screen to power, where based on my test, I got 5 hours and 36 minutes of screen on time, which was really impressive when I was at 10% battery. Now, the phone also supports 15 watt fast charging and it also has a reverse wireless charging or wireless share up to 9 watts, which could be useful to charge the Galaxy Buds. Now, when it comes to gaming, I love how playing games like Asphalt 9 and also PUBG had a full screen gaming experience and playing games was extra sweet again due to its really nice speakers. Now, for some extras when you make a purchase of the phone. Now, one thing that Samsung has done, which in my opinion is a great addition, is the access to the premier services. So, when you buy the Galaxy Fold, you have the opportunity to consult a dedicated specialist and they will walk you through the Galaxy Fold and also the accessories as well. Then I will also guide you into the key features and how to use the device. And on top of that, there's a 24-7 helpline which you can call at any hour of the day to make sure that you go through what exactly you need within the phone. And lastly, the premium service also includes a free on-site pickup and delivery as well as one-time inner screen replacement within 12 months of purchase. Now that, my friend, is what I call by premium service. Alright guys, in conclusion, the Samsung Galaxy Fold is indeed a futuristic phone and before using the phone as my daily driver, at first, I thought that it was going to be a phone that was not going to be easy to use from a day-to-day -day usage but I did find that it was great. But as you guys would have guessed, due to its overall features and the design of the phone, the phone comes with a retail price of 8,388 ringgit and it is available in participating outlets which I will link it down below. So if you ask me whether I would get this phone as my daily driver and make a purchase, I would say that if there are telco companies here in Malaysia which would give a package for the Samsung Galaxy Fold, I would get this in a pinch. Because honestly guys, I would totally use and rock this as my daily driver. And yes, this is a device which I did not feel like I wanted to give it back to Samsung. 